what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome new front end for Android well it's been on the market for a little while but it hasn't got much attention it's recently been updated and it's actually really awesome and it's easy to set up so in this video we're going to be taking a look at it I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough and you can definitely test it out on your device so what I'm on right now is a Galaxy Tab S8. So I've got screen recording going right now so we can see everything a little better. But I've also installed this on the new Retroid Pocket 3. We'll take a look at that by the end of the video. But yeah, it does work out really well. First things first, I want to mention I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this. So I'm going to go with Daisho. Not exactly sure if that's correct, but it's over on Google Play. It's free to use. And I've got it installed and I've got it set up on this tablet right now. So we'll go ahead and open it up. And uh, as you can see, it is a very good looking front end here. So there's lots of options, lots of stuff to mess around with in here. But in this video, I just kind of wanted to show it off. And I'm also going to give you a quick walkthrough on how to quickly set up a few emulators here and there. Super easy to do. But uh, if we scroll through here, let's go to NES. So we've got a grid view here. You can use a controller with this also. We've also got the list view, which does look pretty good. You can set it up for dark mode if you want to. Personally, I think it does look good in this light mode, but it's really easy to use. And we'll go back to the platforms. Let's go over to Sega Dreamcast. And yeah, so again, list view, grid view. And from here, we've also got details. So if I go back to list view, It'll give some information about the game, and right now it is playing the soundtrack from the game in the background, but I had to mute it because Crazy Taxi 2 does have copyrighted music in it. Really cool little feature, though. Attack the balls by hopping. And yeah, you can jump right into emulation. This doesn't come with any ROMs or emulators pre-installed. You will have to download those from Google Play, but uh, it'll prompt you if you don't have that emulator installed. It'll automatically download the box art, all the metadata, and we can actually set up the front end or the front interface with different artwork and there is a download section inside the app. But yeah, it's definitely worth giving it a try, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up some emulators. Uh, there's really no instructions in the app itself. It is pretty simple as soon as you get the hang of it, but I did wanna make a quick tutorial just to show you how to get everything up and running. Now there's a lot more to it than you're gonna see in this video, and this is gonna be constantly updated. It's still a bit early for the front end, but it's working out really well on everything that I've tested on, like the Retroid Pocket 3, the Galaxy Tab S8, and the Black Shark 5. Okay, so if you're ready to get this set up, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, you're obviously going to need some games. I can't tell you where to get them. But I've got an SD card inserted into this tablet here. Uh, we've got internal storage, and we've also got our SD card. I just usually create a folder in here. I've got some Dreamcast, Game Boy, GBA, Game Boy Color, N64. And uh, my N64 games are .N64. Now, if you're in the emulation, you've probably already got all this stuff, but I just wanted to give you a quick heads up on this. The front end doesn't include any games or emulators at all, so we will need to get those. But first things first, let's go ahead and download the front end. We're going to head over to the Play Store. Link for this will be in the description. We're going to go ahead and install it. And you can start downloading emulators if you want to, but once we import everything, it's going to prompt us on a good emulator to use for the front end. So now that we've got it installed, We'll just open it up, and as you can see, there's really not much going on here. First thing we need to do, download platforms right here. It's going to give us a list of different platforms or different systems that we can emulate here on our Android device. Now, you can go through and choose everything if you want to, but for this video, I'm just going to go with three real quick, some easy stuff to mess with. We'll do Dreamcast, GBA, and let's go with, um, let's go with N64. We'll choose Import, give it a second, and now if we scroll using your controller or you can swipe, you can see we've got our Dreamcast section, GBA section, and our N64 section. Obviously, not much going on because we haven't imported anything, and one thing I like to do up front is just download some artwork here. So we can head up to the very top, Settings, Download Platform Wallpaper Pack. So there's a few to choose from. You can go through and experiment with these if you want to, but I'm going to go with Vikings Colorful. It's going to give us a little bit of information about the author and everything like that. We're going to download the pack. And keep in mind, 
when we download this pack, it's only downloading it for the systems that we've set up. So if you do add more systems down the road, you will have to re-download that pack. Not a big deal though. We're gonna go back to platforms. And now, as you can see, we've got some wallpapers here. Got a little artwork making it look pretty good so far. Now, if we go into our Dreamcast section, we don't have any games. It's an empty library. So from platforms, we're gonna to go to paths down in the lower right hand corner. So we're working with Dreamcast right now. We're gonna add more. And from here, we're gonna to navigate to where our Dreamcast games are located. Mine are on my SD card in a folder called Dreamcast. Use this folder, choose Allow, Finish. So we've got the path set up. Now we need to choose Sync right here in the lower left hand corner. And it's gonna sync all those games. It's also gonna scrape the box art and metadata for us. So this could take a little while depending on how many games you have but this one should be done. And personally, I really like the grid view. We've got Dreamcast imported, but we don't have an emulator that's gonna allow us to play these games just yet. So I'm actually gonna head back to my platforms and from the Dreamcast section, I'm gonna tell the front end what emulator I wanna use with Dreamcast. So in the bottom right hand corner, we have the little pin icon. This is gonna be our edit and player settings right here. So you can add a new one to the list if you want to, but if we use the drop down menu, you can see that we have a few emulators we can choose from. Personally, I like using Redream, so I'm gonna choose number five here for Redream. We're gonna save. If we go into the emulator and try to play Marvel vs. Capcom 2, for instance, it's gonna tell us that we don't have Redream installed. Click Confirm. It's gonna take us over to Google Play. We can install Redream and we can start playing it from here. So yeah, really easy to set that up. You can use RetroArch with Flycast, you can use the Raycast standalone if you want to. It's really up to you, but personally, I like Redream. Let's head back over to the front end and we'll just set up one more. Okay, let's get one more set up. We'll do GBA. Again, we don't have anything imported here. That's fine because it's super easy to do. Paths, add more. We're gonna to head to where we have our GBA games located. We're gonna use this folder, allow, finish, sync, and you can actually see it populate while it's syncing. Just give it a second. There you go. We'll tap on it. It's gonna tell us we don't have an emulator installed. Now, if you've already got RetroArch installed, it's probably gonna to default to RetroArch for you. Uh, it's up to you. But this one here is telling me that I can use GBA free, or again, like we saw, we can do an edit and find out exactly what we can use for this. So if we scroll down the list, GBA, there's a ton of different emulators that we can use. So it's really up to you. I'm gonna go with one that I don't normally use, and that's gonna be Pizza Boy. I've actually never tested this emulator, but let's go ahead and add that. So we'll head back, tap on the game again, it's going to give us the notification to download the emulator we have chosen to run this game. It'll bring us over to Google Play. We'll install it. Once it's finished installing, we can head back over and start playing the game. So yeah, we've got a lot of different options with this emulator and it's really easy to set up. I think it looks really good, lots of customization, and it is still a bit early, so more is coming for this thing. I'll leave a link for it in the description, but before we wrap this video up, I did want to show you this running on the Retroid Pocket 3 because I do think it looks really good on this handheld. And by the way, this front end here is also a launcher, so if you do want to set this as your default launcher for your handheld device, you can always do it from the settings or just press your home button and set it as your default there. But every time you start it up, it'll bring you into this front end here instead of using the stock Android launcher or something else that you had set up. And like I mentioned, you can swap this over to dark mode from the settings, but I really do like the way it looks in this light mode, especially on a handheld like this. I've got a bunch of stuff imported. Now the Retroid Pocket 3 isn't great for super high-end emulation like GameCube, PS2, or 3DS, but I have made a few videos. If you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave a link in the description. But overall, I really do like this handheld and having a nice front end on it like this really does make a difference, especially given the fact that we can set this up as our default launcher for Android. That way, whenever we start the unit up, it'll go right to our front end. 
But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you know how to properly pronounce the name of this front end, let me know in the comments below and definitely at least give it a try. I mean, it's free on Google Play. You can install it and uninstall it within a few seconds. It's really up to you. But that's it for this one. Link for everything that I mentioned is in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.